another little rubber thingy that uh, connects the top to the bottom that prevents the water from spilling out and this is for the tube that creates the steam and there's its hole down there so watch out for this guy again grubby we will need to clean that out and it goes like this over there so let's throw it in the pile he had dad had just gotten the black thing off when i walked down the stairs Yep, so that's what it looks like underneath. This is sort of a bakelite. It's very tough material. It's not normal plastic. Uh, heat resistant kind of thing. Heavier than what you would Okay, so this is what you'll find underneath. This is the interesting working bit. Obviously the water typically from the reservoir that sits up here drips down here if you're on steam cycle. If you're not, that little plunger valvey thing would block it from dripping in there uh, which makes it a dry iron and like I said the steamer bit goes drips there or steam uh, pumps water in there and it creates steam out the front I guess or maybe it distributes it through all these holes here I don't, I'm not sure what's going on underneath there in the chambers and this is this bit here is what you'll come across. I've never seen something like this, so I had to think about this and read up and see what I could find out. Let me uh, show you. So I'm just turning the control knob here. This is in the off position. You'll see what it does there. It pushes these to see there's a, like a, two points on springy steel uh, blades almost and they move as you turn this knobby that way and this sucker is tapered as well so this is a varistor i think a variable resistor so here's the old circuit basically so here's the one end of the element and you'll see it goes in this tube obviously going through here somewhere comes back out this way and then this loose point that I thought was a problem, it's not, it's just loose because it sits on this long thick wire, goes into this one end of this switch here, uh, the resistor, I should say. And this thing increases the resistance as it, depending on where, which position it is, and it, the other thing it does, it controls this little valve here from top as you saw with those plastic bits um, nothing here is frozen up so that's good that's the way it should work so all it all this does in terms of these things it's it connects this bar with this one if you follow it through here those two points you'll see it's isolated here with ceramic discs these two wires this one is connected to the to the one plate and this one is connected to the bottom plate and so as long as th those two points touch there we're good they make the circuit so then it goes back here to this thing now i'll show a photo of this thing this is actually what the the repair i did when i found this it was totally bent upwards you'll see the bent maybe you see the line there on the on this this is a spring loaded piece of plate and below it's a piece of ceramic block. So this end was like, like up here. It was sitting up here. I'll show the photo. Um, so it was bent this way, standing up and totally broken loose from the bottom one. Now initially I thought this is another set of these, of these point thingies. Let me show you what I actually found. What I forgot to mention in the beginning is when, when I emptied this thing out, the water, and that's important you gotta for guys that don't work with this all the time you gotta empty the water out like this you gotta keep it uh, upside down so the water runs out there maybe maybe more like this but anyway the, my wife did empty this thing mostly but there was still a little water in so i tried doing that and when i did that this thing fell out this little piece of shiny looking metal thingy and I didn't know what that was until 
I figured out that this here is not a contactor, it's a, a thermal fuse or a TCO, a thermal cutoff. Now th this is a very unique one, I couldn't find one like this, I'll show you some pictures of what, what you get today. They look like little cans um, in line with two, two wires mostly, but you also get ceramic ones, but then all the working parts are inside the ceramic block. And this one, it's all on the outside. So all that they've done here, it seems like they put these two connectors. There's one at the bottom, and you'll probably see it better on the photo. But let me point that out. You'll see the edge of it at least there. And it's connected to this bar here. This bar is also anchored inside the ceramic block. So it's also anchored inside the block here on this wire here. And so this plate here is connected to this side and the bottom plate is connected to this side. In between them is the, this metal. I read up on it a little bit and the melting point of solder is 180 degrees Celsius. Luckily you can double it there and it's um, 360 degrees Fahrenheit roughly. And that's right about where this should be, I suspect. The close iron goes from anywhere between 200 and 500 degrees Fahrenheit. So I guess around the upper end is, is where you want this guy to to melt if it if you want it to melt. This is clearly a, just a safeguard because we do have the electronic circuit board sitting back here, which is supposed to switch the, the power off when this thing gets too hot. But I guess that's a second file safe. And this is permanent. Once this breaks, then you can see there's no removable parts here. So um, I don't suggest that you do it like I did here with solder. Okay, so the way I did that was uh, I used this um, hefty soldering iron. You could quickly find out why you need a 100 watt one. I tried my 30 odd watt one, it didn't work. There's just too much metal that draws the heat away. So you want to push it down, because remember it's standing up at an angle like this. Push it down with something that doesn't conduct the heat away, like a piece of wood. In this case, this down, and then heat this up. Before I did that, I put flux on both these ends and the inside, and I did turn it up with solder. I hope you know what that means. But basically, I put solder on the top here of the gun and heated up the bottom plate, and the solder would run off and go stick there. Did the same to the top one, and then I pushed them together and I heated up the top one. Make sure you have a little extra solder on the tip because it helps to conduct the heat to the element there. Push down on it and wait until it melts together. You'll see it when it uh, and it will go together a little more. And then I kept the pressure on. That's where I used this guy. Only to cool it down while pressing it down. So doing that means the heat's now gonna flow into this and it's gonna quickly cool down. You don't have to sit here for minutes holding it and it stayed like that. So we'll see how that goes. At least it, it completes the circuit now. I just wanted to show you guys up front here. So you, you see this little pin is all the way up here. So it's totally turned anti-clockwise to the zero position on the control. And those points are now disengaged. So you'll see this is really off. It now breaks the circuit. And that's why this bottom guy is there. It pushes the top plate so it can't follow the bottom one down. So it creates that little gap that's enough to break the circuit. And as soon as I turn this clockwise, you'll see they start joining each other. And the bottom one pushes so hard that it pushes this one up. And that is to allow this one to follow the curve. Now earlier I said I think this is a resistor. I don't think so anymore because I thought this is part of the circuit. The stop it here, but it's not. You see, it's totally isolated from the rest with a ceramic disc there. But let's just measure it. So we put it on ohm scale measuring resistance and I'm going to use these same two points because I want to see if turning that makes any difference in the resistance. So 12.5 there. Aiden, can you turn it for us? Uh, turn this. the top bit. Yeah, just turn it. To what? Yeah, keep turning. Okay, whoa. Doesn't seem to be making a difference. It stays around there. So, yeah, I don't know how they control the heat then. Obviously this piece of electronics here must allow more or less current through, is what I'm guessing. So maybe that does a little more than just heat control, it also probably controls the current that heats this element up. Because if the resistance doesn't change, then the current must change to get more or less wattage, um, or the other voltage. Um, so maybe it controls one of those two things, at least. 
but that's it. So this was the fix. Um, I'll now go ahead and clean all this up and we'll take you through putting it back together, which is just the reverse of this, but there's just a few things that you need to look out for and things that need to be in specific positions that we'll point out to you. I've cleaned this up and I've discovered a um, problem here. You can see there's a few studs, like little pillars holding up the this uh, steam pocket here. You can see there's like six different studs and that's connecting the top to the bottom I believe. But here was a hole. You might might see it if you go back in the video. It was a, it's as if this top thing popped off here. And just to show you, this is the hole for the dripper in the middle. You know, where the, the reservoir connects up to the this cavity. And th this is the hole for the steamer, for the extra steam that you can generate through there. There's nothing that ends up with that. So this should be closed. So you can see I epoxied it. Uh, there's a special steel epoxy glue. Um, we'll see how it holds up. I don't know the temperature rating of it or um, you know if it's gonna deal with the steam and the heat. We'll see how that goes. So it may melt mid um, ironing. <laughs> yeah, it might pop off. Okay, so let's uh, reassemble this. So for that, the only thing that you've got to keep in mind is this little guy needs to go on the bottom there. And there's not much holding it. You'll have to sort of push it there and hope that it stays. I'm just going to keep it sideways for now. Okay, so it's together. Okay, I think it's in place. So this other guy, if you wondered why I haven't put it in, it goes on top here. Like that. So it just sits there. I did try to put it from the bottom because I thought this shoulder means it goes from the bottom, but it pops through itself. You can see it's very high. It actually seals up on, on the top part, so it, do it doesn't need to go in yet. So if you remember, this just goes up there. At the back, you want to pop these two through there again and the two connectors here and we'll bend those now still needs to go a little bit don't want to overdo it still put a little play there I think that's fine let's twist it these and you'll see they can only twist in one way, one direction. If you can see that. But there's a little shoulder on the top there and on the bottom here. So you can't go clockwise on this one. You've got to go counterclockwise. And this one. Your, the way you have to do it may vary. Yeah. This one same. You can't turn it to the left at the top and to the right at the bottom so you're gonna go clockwise here just have half, halfway is fine don't you want to go full 45 or full 90 degrees no if you do it too much you run the risk of metal fatigue so that means after a few times you've done this it'll just twist off then you've got a big problem so this one you again you just do a little, just so it doesn't slide through, naturally. No, Dad, it won't break. You'll just use some solder, because you've been using a lot of that recently. <laughs> solder is not a good thing to bend, either. It's very weak. Solder and duct tape. 